Hey everybody, hope you guys are doing wonderful. We gotta discuss complex sentences because complex sentences are some things that are so important in IELTS and CELPIP writing and speaking. If you don't use them, you can never cross a nine or 10 in CELPIP. You can never cross a seven in IELTS. So we'll discuss those today. Uh, first, let's talk about IELTS. In writing task one, you should have two complex sentences. In writing task two, you should have three. So IELTS very clearly mentions this and on multiple occasions that you need this structure. Selpip writing, you need at least two in task one and two in task two. Simple, just keep two and two. Now when it comes to speaking, it becomes complicated because every answer is different. We can't really say how many you need in each speaking question. So by your knowledge and with your judgment, use as many as you can, okay? Uh, there is something that you need, which is practice, of course, because when you're speaking, you're thinking of so many things, right? Grammar, timing, uh, answer, and so on. So you need to practice complex sentences. And at the end of this video, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to give you a strategy with which you can practice complex sentences in a way that you use it naturally when you speak. So you don't have to think, you know, if I'm speaking, I don't have to think, all right, I have to make a complex sentence now. It's going to happen naturally because that is what happens with native speakers. They use a variety of sentences and mixtures and phrases and complex is thrown in there. And that's what examiners want. You know, they want you to speak like native speakers, write like native speakers. So writing, you can control it. Speaking, I'll teach you how at the end of this video. But first, let's understand what complex sentences are. A lot of people think complex sentences means make the vocabulary complex or make the idea complex. But what is complex basically? It is something that is not simple. It is beyond ordinary, beyond. So basically, it's if it's beyond ordinary, it's extraordinary, which means it should have a mixture of ideas. When it comes to English, English language, we talk about complex sentences. It means a mixture of two or more ideas. In CELPIP and IELTS, you don't need three ideas in a complex sentence. You will probably ruin your marks and there's no extra marks for it. Two ideas in one sentence are enough. For example, I can have two uh, separate sentences, okay? I can say that uh, I got so hungry today <clears throat> that I wanted to uh, eat something, full stop. I went to the market to buy something right away, full stop. This sentence is gonna give me maybe a six in IELTS or maybe a seven in self. But if I make it complex and I say, since, okay, I started the sentence with since. Since I couldn't control my hunger today, comma, I had to go to the market to buy something right away. Okay, now this is crossing nine in CELPIP, it's crossing seven in IELTS. What happened is I used the word since, and there's some magic words that I'm gonna teach you today. And with that, I made the sentence in two parts. So when the sentence is broken down into two parts, it becomes a complex sentence. So what are some words you can use? Take some notes, I'm gonna put it on the screen right now. Write down, okay, if, based on, concerning, considering, due to, because of, since, although, while, when, depending on. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of each one of these, so don't worry. These words or phrases are gonna start your sentences, they're gonna start your ideas, they can be even at the start of paragraphs. I recommend not doing it in conclusion, and of course, when you're finishing speaking, don't do it at the last sentence. Do it in the middle, okay? Middle, the, when you're describing something, if it's a descriptive thing, it's the best place to use it, okay? With each one of these words or phrases, you will notice that when you start making a sentence, it easily breaks into two parts, all right? So what I would suggest, learn five of them in, in detail, you know, use them every single time. And keep the extra ones just in case maybe you, you find some other ones to use when you're speaking or writing, but these are more than five. So if you learn all of them, I guarantee you, you will not be able to use all of them because you will be confused. So keeping five solid best ones, your favorite ones would be a good idea. And then keep the rest just in your mind, just in case. Okay, so let's discuss how to actually use it. Let's start with if, okay? And let's assume we're writing an essay and we're talking about, um, you know, if the inflation goes up, then uh, you wouldn't be able to buy food, all right? So pretty simple sentence. If the prices of food and grocery items shoot up, comma, I wouldn't be able to afford most of the things I eat, 
Simple. It's a conditional sentence. I think everybody knows how to use if. Let's go with based on, okay? Based on the skyrocketing prices of food items and groceries, comma, I wouldn't be able to afford most of them. When I say comma, it means the pause in speaking, and of course in writing it's the comma, which is the separate starting clause. The sec second clause starts after the comma, because comma is a natural pause, okay? Now, based on highlights the situation, based on this situation, and then comma, this is the result. Concerning. Concerning and considering. Both of them are very similar. So, concerning, um, well, I, you know what? I, main, I mainly prefer considering. Concerning is okay. It's a little outdated, though. But you can use them interchangeably. So, I'll, I'll pick one example. Let's say considering. Considering the sky-high inflation rates, comma, a lot of people will not be afford will be will not be able to afford groceries. I'm gonna change the sentence. Uh, give you another example, which is not that negative, but you can also see considering and based on are very similar. They describe the situation that this is a condition and then the result. Okay, uh, due to and due to and because of again interchangeable, very similar. It's the exact same thing. Um, most likely in your writing or speaking, you will say because many times. That's why I prefer you use due to when you start a complex sentence. It's going to be different. Now, here you blame something, okay? So, uh, blame in a good or a, neg a bad way, right? Positive, negative. Let's do something good, all right? Due to the constant hard work my staff is putting in their classes, comma, our students are getting amazing marks, okay? Now, this is something positive. It could be negative too. Due to our failing efforts in trying to get students good results, comma, we're ha having to change our staff. So we're blaming something in this case. And in the other case, we were uh, appreciating ourselves for, you know, due to this, blaming something, but in a positive way, saying that this is the cause and this is the result. Let's go with since. Since is again, uh, very similar to because of and due to actually you can use it interchangeably with that with them as, as well. So let's use the same example. Uh, since our students and teachers work really hard together, comma, they get excellent results in terms of scores. All right, so here we have, again, the condition and the result. Now we have although. Although is however. Basically, it's the same thing like however, but at the start of the sentence. So you know how I can say, uh, we need to start working out every day, however, comma, we don't have time. Now, instead of however, remove that, just say although at the start of the sentence. Although we need to start working out every day, comma, we don't have time, okay? So a major mistake people make is they say, but in the middle, when they start the sentence with although, they'll say, although we don't have time to work out, sorry, although we need to work out, but we don't have time. Don't say but, although means but. If you put although at the start of the sentence, you don't need to say but, okay? While. While defines two separate conditions. It's good when you, it's not like a condition and result. It's just like two different things. You know, maybe two things happening at different times or at the same time. Let me give you some examples. While I was watching TV, comma, my wife was cooking food. Or let's do two different situations. While you will, um, well, while you'll be listening to music tomorrow, comma, your teacher will be extremely furious because of the background noises. This is something happening in the future. All right, let's talk about when. When obviously means events, it relates to events. When people try to work hard and are passionate about their craft, comma, they deliver excellent results. All right, this is a situational thing. This is what happens when you do something. It could also literally be an exact story. When I started to work out last year, comma, I gain more muscle, gained more muscle, sorry. So it could be a time in the past or it could be a situation, you know, when you do this, when you uh, protect yourself uh, from diseases, comma, you stay healthy. So it could be a situation as well. And the final thing is depending on, depending on is also a good variety to use because unlike anything else here, it has ING, well, considering it has it too, but depending on because of the ING, it will include more variety, all right? So depending on, again, it's, um, it's a situation where we're unsure, okay? Depending on the weather status tomorrow, comma, I might or might not be able to come to work, okay? So here it depends on a certain scenario, and that's it. Now, what I was gonna tell you at the end, 
The secret to knowing these words and making sure you use them every time you open your mouth or you start writing something is to make 10 sentences out of each phrase that I've taught you today based on 10 sentences, considering 10 sentences, although 10 sentences for two weeks. Okay. Do this every day for two weeks, writing and speaking, maybe 10 sentences, writing 10 speaking. Um, the more you do, the better and do it for every phrase, do it for two weeks nonstop. And I promise you, if you really do it, you will learn this for a lifetime. It's not just going to be for IELTS or self it's going to be for English language, for your speaking, for your writing, and it's going to have so much variety. It's going to help you explain situations and make you sound fancy. Okay. So please do that. That is the secret for you to just make it natural because complex sentences should be natural as they are for native speakers and speakers of English language. So if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Talk to you very soon as usual. Take care.